Hello and welcome to Agri History. Today we'll cover the topic of corn domestication. But before we begin, we must cover the concept of a F1 hybrid. A F1 hybrid is a crossbreed between two open pollinated cultivars made through self pollination. See older videos, specifically the Apple videos, for information on the topic of self pollination and open pollination. The result of this crossbreeding produces progeny that have the traits of both open pollinated cultivars as well as the uniformity of an open pollinated line of cultivars, but with greater vigor yield potential. The drawback to this process, however, is that the uniformity is lost in the second generation and in certain cases vigor as well. This makes seed safing a non-starter. The origins of corn is still somewhat of a mystery. However, what the archaeological and uh, genetic data has shown us has revealed much of what went into the cultivation and domestication of corn. In Central and South America, corn has been a main food source for many empires, such as the Inca, Maya, and Aztec of Central America. The first substantial contribution of archaeology to figuring out the origins of corn was a mound found in the Bath Cave of Mexico. This cave was excavated by Herbert Dick of Harvard University in 1948 and 1950. The mound contained corn cobs and other remnants of corn at all levels. These remnants showcased a uh, evolutionary sequence from the, with the oldest being at the bottom and the most recent being at the top. At the bottom layer of the mound, tiny cobs that were 2-3 to three centimeters long were found and radiocarbon dated to about 3600 BC. People studying the anatomy of that cob discovered that it contained traits from both popping corn cultivars and a type of corn called Pod corn. Pod corn is a type of corn where the kernels are kept inside bracts within the cob. This strain was reverse engineered by crossbreeding existing strains of pod corn with existing strains of popcorn corn, and then backcrossing that hybrid back into popcorn corn strains. This reconstructed strain had two means of seed dispersal. One was through the use of fragile branches on the tassel, and the other was kernels on the ear that were not completely enclosed within the husks, showcasing what corn might have looked like in ancient times. In 1949, the La Pera Cave of Northern Mexico was excavated and like in the Bat Cave, a similar sequence was found, with the earliest corn being dated to 2500 BC, based on radiocarbon data. This variety was identified as a still existing corn strain called Natel. The earliest cobs in that cave were larger than the earliest cobs of the Bat Cave, giving some confirmation that the researchers were on the right track, and that the dates were probably correct. In a third cave called Romano's Cave, they found remnants of Teosinte, a close genetic relative of corn. These specimens were dated between 1400 BC and 400 BC, and more excavated specimens found were dated between 1800 BC to 1400 BC. Since Teosinte was not found growing in the wild in this area, the researchers could only draw two conclusions. The first one was that Teosinte was used for crossbreeding by farmers of that area. 
The second possibility is that Teosinte once had a larger range than it does now. To figure out if the hypothesis that corn was bred from Teosinte, the researcher George Beadle crossbred corn and Teosinte together. And based on the frequency of progeny that looked more like Teosinte and progeny that looked more like corn, he deduced that as few as five genes might be responsible for much of the differences between corn and Teosinte. Later genetic studies by John Dobley found genetic evidence that supports this hypothesis. And he began narrowing the genetic pool to find the genes responsible. So far, the genes that have been best researched are the TB1 gene and the TGA gene. TB1 is responsible for the shortening and feminization of the axillary branches in domesticated corn while TGA is responsible for the hardened fruit case of Teosinte. Changes in the expressions of TB1 seem to be the result of alterations to the regulatory genes attached to this gene. The differences between TGA, however, seem to be the result of alterations in the amino acids found in that gene. It is likely that more than these two genes are responsible for the domestication process. Unfortunately, nearly 500 regions of the genome show evidence of selection during domestication. So finding the morphology changing genes will be more difficult than expected. On a side note, some of these regions do not have any genes, indicating that regulatory genes are somewhat responsible for the domestication of corn. But like most crops that were domesticated, the result is a loss of genetic diversity. It was discovered that more than 3,000 genes showed reduced diversity due to this domestication process. Despite this, however, 80% of the diversity found in Teosinte is found in corn, land races. But based on all available evidence, it's likely that Teosinte is the ancestor of corn. The first corn breeding that happened was with open pollinated cultivars, such as Reed Yellow, Dent, Krug, Learning, and Lancaster Surecrop. These were bred by mass selection that was based on plant, ear, and grain type. This early work was done by farmers and seedsmen. This provided the germplasm sources of which inbred lineages to make the F1 hybrids. But prior to that, these open pollinated cultivars were used for grain production. In the 70s, a new set of breeding procedures was used to improve the new strains of open pollinated corn. But open pollinated cultivars of corn were used in both the 1800s and 1900s. The first work on F1 hybrid production was by Dr. Shull and Dr. East of the USDA. Due to the superior properties of F1 hybrid corn, hybrid corn became a commercial enterprise a few years later after it was first developed in 1915-1925. By 1943, 100% of the corn acreage of Iowa was F1 hybrid corn. In the Corn Belt, 90% of the corn was F1 hybrid in nature but the whole of the United States was only 60% of the corn acreage when it came to F1 hybrid cultivation. However, by 2011, 80% of all corn cultivars were F1 hybrids. This concludes our video on corn. Stay tuned for the next episode on barley where we close the book on grains.
See you then.